Anyone? After completing my two and a half to three hours of the Evil Within the Assignment, the first DLC pack to come in the expansion season pass that came out on release, I realized that developer Tango Gameworks and director Shinji Mikami, who directed the game, has created a cyberpunk universe that not can just be disturbing and horrifying, but also diverse. This is due to a great idea implanted here. The original Evil Within was one of my favorite games in 2014 for its survival horror, its unique atmosphere, and its setting, but it's also thanks to the scarce ammunition that you have with the weapons. The Evil Within the assignments takes a different path to it and different take. Instead of going loud with survival noise, instead the assignment goes silent, stealthily, in the dark, and deadly. This is in great notation, and surprisingly, it goes perfectly with shrouding colors. The Evil Within the Assignment does not take place before at the events of the title, the original game. It takes place in between. You play as Julia Kidman, who is believed to be an agent of a corporation at the end of the game, as she does, as it implied throughout the entire time. In this story, she is actually sent into this sleepy world that Sebastian Castellanos was into, and when she had to find Leslie, who was a main plot point of the original title. She needs to find Leslie in order to get out of this area, even though she went in there trying to find him. She has to go in there to find him because the corporation wants Leslie. And now this involves a much more focused narrative, and instead that doesn't let it go all loose and out of control like the original game did, going from one scenario to another without any idea where it is. The Evil Within is unique, like I said before, because of its uh, idea of gameplay. The idea of gameplay here is all based around stealth. No violence, no explosions, no murder. It only once in a while when you have an axe that you can kill people. This game is all based around stealth, as you never is allowed to go out guns blazing. When it comes to monsters, you are vulnerable. You can die in two hits if these things see you, and they are ruthless and relentless. If they see you, you're screwed, and you basically have to run until you hide. And that's not good to run because you have very low stamina. And these creatures are persistent, especially with the new designs that the developers created. Now, I'm not going to spoil what they do, but let's just say they are disturbing, horrifying, and some of them will leave nightmares in your life forever. And not only that, they might also remind you of fan fiction. Kind of like how the like Shinji Mikami's other games, like the original Evil Within, made the Keeper so unique, and the m Monster Regenerators from Resident Evil 4. And that this ad, this creature in the game, which you may see, is also a unique, but also great add to the series of unique monsters that you will never see in another game just like this. It actually odds, it even catches up to the odds of Pyramid Head in the Silent Hill franchise, of how unique and disturbing this creature is altogether. Because of that, the game works well for it on its own, and it plays well as well. Well, I said, well, a lot. Now, visually, the game looks great as always, with the same engine it used before, and the graphics are always top-notch. And the story never loses pace or loses control of what it's doing, because that it's all so balanced and controlled, and the narrative never falls apart because of it. Stealth-wise, the game is unique as well. As always before, like I said, you never go into full violence unless it's one scenario where you have to, and you don't need syringes to find health anymore. You just need to stand still or not be spotted, and you regenerate health slowly. This also makes for a great game as it's always unique to do something else different, and because of it, it makes it a unique game with a disturbing tone. It also gives us some backstory about the protagonist, Julia Kimmon, who is voiced by Jennifer Carpenter, who does a great job with her performance. She gives the character much more reality and much more of a backstory than we did with Sebastian Castellanos. Because of it, we always feel more reliable, and we also feel like we want her to survive. Because of it, it makes us much more invested in the character. The Evil Within the Assignment is no perfect trend as its controls may be awkward at times, slightly out of control, or sometimes odd when I'm trying to do stealth scenarios. Every once in a while I get detected when I didn't want to, and that was because it was my fault or the controls. Saying that though, the game never suffers. Its cliffhanger ending also sets up another DLC pack called The Consequences, which will leave off where we left off before, and it will also answer more questions of the environments that we were in before in the past. This makes The Evil Within much more lovable than before, and it's great to come back to a horror series that I just fell in love with. It's one of those games that just grows on you in a great way, as it's unique survival horror skills, it's horrifying atmosphere, it's great gameplay, and it's a cliffhanger ending always leaves you wanting more. By the end credits, I didn't want to stop.
I wanted more to play. I mean, that's a good thing. The Evil Within is amazing on its own, but it's a survival horror series that's never gonna die easily. And like I and like I said before, it's a game that I love before, and I love it again, and I love playing some new content in the next year. The Evil Within is a great uh, add-on. The assignment is a great add-on to this franchise, and it's gonna be growing epically more. I hope there's a sequel to the actual Evil Within too, you know. And like this series, this thing is not gonna die easily, as we're always gonna be stuck inside the mind of a madman in order to survive this madness. The Evil Within is a great add-on, and it really does uh, pay for the price of $10. The next DLC pack also costs $10 as well, so make sure you have $10 in your pocket when you want to buy it. Overall, The Evil Within, the assignment, is a great add-on for 2-3 to three hours of hell. Another 2-3 or three hours of hell is always a good thing for me, even though if hell is a bad word. Overall, I recommend buying it, and it's also worth picking up at a price whenever it is ready for you to pick up. Okay? So that's a good thing to know. Overall, like I said before, even within the assignment, it's something that I recommend heavenly if you have high the season pass, and if you're downloading it right now, I recommend you play on the highest difficulty, as its intensity difficulty makes it that much more lovable, and much more terrifying, but it's also that much more investing. Even within its creature design, its sound design, its visual looks, its gameplay is outstanding, which is why I'm going to give the game an 8.5 out of 10. It's one of those games that DLC pack that's just perfect. While other games like Blood Dragon does it well, this game also does it well as well. Good as well. So that's it guys. Please like the video, comment below, subscribe. Also watch other reviews on my channel, which is called The Michael 1987 on YouTube. And until then, I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye bye. Sorry, Detective Skibs and Creepsaw! <laughs> <laughs>